Welcome back, everyone. Today we are going to work on making more power while also obtaining plutonium. Which means a nuclear reactor. However, I think we should go one step at a time and follow the quests. So, we shall start by making a mainframe cluster level 6. After working some wafers to obtain some 16 GHz CPUs, a bunch of 8 GB RAM DIMMs and a few MOBOs, we have enough mainframes to build a mainframe cluster. And now we find out a big disappointment, this reactor is not greggy enough. We could make it for the quest, but I do not want to be bothered with obtaining a nether star right now. I want a peaceful but greggy experience. So forget what I said about following the quests. Nothing seems to be preventing us from being able to craft a Greg Tech nuclear reactor. And we can make even more stuff in it than the IC21. So nothing should be able to stop us from obtaining plutonium in unconventional ways. The first thing we are going to do is procure ourselves with more zirconium and uranium, so we go mine some malachite and uranite. While these ores are being processed, we can craft the reactor core. Then we are going to find some combo of machines with matching power ranges that will turn the reactor heat into electricity by boiling water. Once we are at a good point, we realize that our zirconium stock is almost non-existent. So we go mine cassiterite, which we are going to process in a different way to get zirconium out of it. And I'd love to remind you why we use these days when mining on terraform. And this is how much zirconium we got from a stack of ore. Anyways, the other thing we have to process better is uranium. To centrifuge out some 235 isotope, we are going to need a 1024 RU capable centrifuge. And only once we have the setup ready and working, we remember at the last second one important thing, does it looks like this is a proper dress for such important occasions? Yeah, this is more fancy and actually made out of lead. Anyways, we take the enriched uranium and shred it into one over 72s of a dust piles. Then we finish purifying some more zircon, take some poor uranium and go extrude some nuclear fuel containers and some heavy metal rods. And I will never stop admiring how this extruder accepts material in any form. Next we put the rods into the nuclear containers. And we clean the canning machine from possible contamination by making it consume juicy apples. That way, no radiations will risk going inside our batteries the next time we craft them. Finally, we make a new room for hosting this setup and check that we have everything we need for building such plant. Next, we could study a little bit more how this stuff work and do some math to calculate the best possible configuration, but I think we have already done enough math for this series. So, let's get started. We shall start by laying down our four reactor cores. Then, before doing anything else, we make a way to reach the bottom face and put a redstone cover on them to make sure they won't start working too early. Next, we move the output faces around until we are satisfied and then we start connecting some pipes. Then, since we can't wait anymore for that moment, we take our heavy metal rods and, after making sure the reactor is off, we place them in their working locations. We are placing the most reactive rods at the center and the less radioactive ones in the corners. Next, we feed in some cold coolant. Then, since the hot coolant can't be buffered inside tanks because that would be too unbalanced, we are going to store it inside some less greggy container, like a railcraft tank. Finally, we are going to add the only safety measure for this first run, a fluidometer that will let the reactor run only when we have some cold coolant stocked up. But, before starting the system, we should probably use some pincers to take out the rods and do a run with only one rod. 
And, since we added to, something nasty happened. We should have not stepped on the reactor. We shall no longer walk on it. Anyways, it look like the hot coolant is trapped inside, which means that we did not move the hot coolant output properly. After a quick fix, we managed to get some hot coolant out of our test run. With a Geiger counter, we can see that these thorium rods are loading only 8 neutrons, which means a total of 32 heat units per tick. So it is time to add back the stronger stuff. And now you can see that we are producing way more heat. By the way, the properties of the fuel depends on the coolant it is immersed in. And each rod has four main proprieties, how many neutrons it pushes to adjacent rods, how much on itself, what is the maximum it can take before starting to wear down and how many of the neutrons of the previous cycle will be pushed to nearby cells. The last stat, the factor is the most critical one because two adjacent rods will start pushing neutrons back and forth between them, and, if the factor is high enough, this chain reaction will grow exponentially. When that happens, the reactor is called supercritical and is most likely to go boom. The next step of the plant consists in to having some heat exchangers turn the hot coolant into cold coolant and date you. After we took care of the piping for the coolants, we can start building a huge steam boiler above them. Once the boiler is built, we have to fill it with distilled water. So we shall have a small distillery powered by our reactor. Next, we are going to have a sensor that will shout everything off if we run out of water. The steam from the boiler will power the biggest of the smaller turbines, which will turn an EV dynamo. And we feed that power to a transformer that will bring it to our battery. Next we shall have two multimeters, one that shows us the production and one that will shut off everything if the system destabilizes. And, after a bit of debugging and polishing, we have finally reached working temperature. We are now producing 1800 EU per tick. All we have to do right now is add some concrete and some paint here and there. And I have to say it is really cool the way multiple layers of paint stack. Next, we can get some of the asphalt leftovers from our oil plant and work them into blocks that we shall use for paving our road to the victory. However, there is something we are forgetting. The main thing we need out of our reactor is plutonium. And, considering the amount and time we need for it, I think we can fit one whole episode in there. Next time, while waiting for plutonium, we are going to see if we can unlock AE2. Bye bye.